In this video, I shall describe removal of the pancreatic tumor from the head of the pancreas. The procedure is commonly called Whipple's operation after the first surgeon who described it in modern times. The anatomical name for it is pancreatic ordeatinectomy. Pancreatic cancer is a leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Only 1 in 10 patients will receive life-saving surgery. Patients have symptoms for months before they are diagnosed. And the investigations include scans such as ultrasound, CT, MRI, CT, PET scan and endoscopy, such as endoscopic ultrasound or ERCP. And at the end of this, a composite picture is drawn of the cancer and discussed with the surgeons. So here is a simple line drawing uh, depicting the liver, the bile tube, the stomach, the gullet, small bowel pancreas and are drawn a cancer in the head of the pancreas over here at the bottom end of the bowel tube. Commonly the symptoms that patients present with is pain, jaundice, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, statoria, weight loss and pancreatitis. Once it's determined that the patient's tumor can be removed with surgery, then the patient move to the next phase. In this phase, patients are assessed for their fitness and see how well they can exercise, how far they can walk, uh, which determines their fitness. Patients are provided with information around their disease. They are given advice on nutrition, health and exercise. Almost all patients will require pancreatic enzyme supplementation. This replicates the function of the pancreas because the main pancreatic tube is obstructed. And they are also given vitamin K, which is a fat soluble vitamin and may be low at times if patients presented with jaundice. Further advice is given around smoking. Patients are next assessed by the hospital's anesthetic team and this will involve blood tests, an ECG, an assessment of heart and lung function, as well as a further assessment of their other comorbidities. Once these assessments are complete, uh, then the next stop is to have the operation. It is important for the patients to choose the center and the surgeon carefully. Research evidence points that centers that are experienced in dealing with pancreatic cancer and have developed well-functioning teams tend to have better outcomes. The patient would expect to be walked to the OR or theatre. Once there, they will meet with the anaesthetic team and they will have various cannulas and lines inserted. And once this preparation is complete and patients have been given the general anaesthetic, the operation will commence. The operation can be performed with minimally invasive means such as laparoscopic or uh, robotic. If the operations are performed as an open, patients may expect to have a midline scar or a curving scar at the top of the abdomen. Surgeons would then seek to assess whether or not the tumor can be removed. They would look for metastatic disease and they would want to know whether or not there's infiltration of major blood vessels by the tumor. A very quick look at the anatomy before the operation. So this is the liver, the bile tube, the stomach, the small bowel, the pancreas at the back over here, and that's the spleen. And the dotted lines show what needs to be removed in each organ. So this is the cut end of the small bowel, of the pancreas, the stomach, and the bile tube. In this picture, you can see the tumor has been removed and we are left with the cut ends as I had shown previously. In the next phase, the surgeon has now joined the small bowel to the pancreas and the same loop of bowel then progresses and that's joined to the bile tube. And then further down, it's connected to the stomach let's look at this process in a more simplistic manner. As you can see, the dotted lines now represent the tissue that needs to be removed and includes the gallbladder, the bile tube, part of the stomach and the small bowel, the head of the pancreas with the tumor intact, and the duodenum, or again, early part of the small bowel. So all of this needs to come out as one piece so that we are sure that we've removed the tumor completely. Now what would the anatomy look like once all of the this tissue is removed? So here we go. What we are left with is the stomach, the cut end of the bowel tube, and the cut end of the pancreas, and at this end is the small bowel. Just coming back to the removed tissue, so this is what the operation aims to remove, just to ensure the integrity that the tumor is completely removed. So this is a depiction of what the picture looks like once the operation has been completed and the reconstruction performed by the surgeon. Uh, and this is the small bowel that has been brought forward to join to the pancreas, join to the bile tube over here, and then the same loop goes further and joins the stomach or early end of the small bowel to make a new join. So the direction of the flow is from the pancreas juice comes up like that, the bile comes down here, and both of these come down this tube 
The stomach turns the food over like before and passes it down and all of these three then meet over here in the small bowel and both of these are then passed down to be absorbed normally. Once the operation is complete, what should the patient expect? The patient will be woken up and the breathing tube from their windpipe will be removed. They'll be moved to a ward or an enhanced care facility. The patient would expect to have several tubes. Pain relief will be provided by means of either an epidural catheter which is inserted in the back or through patient control in analgesia where patients can push a button and give themselves small amounts of pain relief. So this picture depicts the various tubes. So here is the nasogastric tube. This is the central line in the neck, the peripheral line in the vein, an arterial cannula at the time of operation but then it's removed. This is the incision, this is the abdominal drain coming out and a urinary catheter has been inserted to drain urine. These various tubes will be removed as the patient progresses in the post-operative phase. So what is the objective of the operation and that is to remove the tumor in its entirety, what is called an R0 resection. So let's look at this picture over here. If this is the tumor in black and this is the line that depicts where it has been removed, you can see that this is a complete removal. Now, zinc resection is associated with better post-operative outcome and longer survival. At the time of discharge, what should the patient expect? They should be self-caring. There is no stoma. And they can eat normally, albeit smaller and more regular meals. Their bowel will be functioning and the pain will be under control and they may need medication for that. They usually will not have any external tubes connected to them and they will have a follow-up arrange with the surgical team who performed the operation. The usual hospital stays around 10 days, but it can be longer or shorter than this. It is not a race. It all depends on when the patients recover and provided that they do not suffer complications. I hope you found this useful. If you have any comments, please do share.